In this lesson, chemistry 30-1, we're going to go through enthalpy and heat transfer. We're going to go through a couple important concepts, mainly being the transfer of energy between and within a chemical system. Two important equations you need to know. Q equals mc delta t and delta h equals negative Q. These mean, they may be a little confusing to you at first, but I'll show you what they mean. Q is the energy that a chemical system either releases or absorbs and is typically measured in joules. We break it down into its parts, m, mass in grams. C is something called the specific heat capacity. And all that is is a fancy term of saying how much energy does it take to heat up one gram of something by one degree. We usually use water, and the specific heat capacity for water is 4.19 joules to heat up one gram of water one degree Celsius. Delta T is just another fancy way of saying change in temperature, change being the final temperature, Tf, minus the initial temperature, Ti. Enthalpy is kind of a chemical term to mean the total energy of a system, meaning the total potential energy, kinetic energy, elastic energy, all these energies put together is called the enthalpy of a system. It's not a really useful concept because it's almost impossible to measure it specifically, but we can measure the change in enthalpy, and that is our negative Q, which we found up here. So we can go through a couple examples. Example one, a 50 gram mass of water at 20.5 degrees Celsius is heated to 80 degrees Celsius. Determine Q. So this is pretty straightforward. We just have all of our units here. We just gotta plug them into the equation. Q equals mc delta T equals our mass of water, 50.0 grams. It's important you keep it in grams as well. Some questions will throw kilograms at you. You're gonna to have to change it to grams. So times C, 4.19 joules per gram degrees Celsius times, I'll just write it down here, times our final temperature minus our initial temperature. So 80 degrees Celsius minus 20.5 degrees Celsius. You plug that all into the calculator and you get 12,465.25 joules. To do sig digs, you just move the decimal over one, two, three, four times. 1.25 times 10 to the 4 joules. So in English, <clears throat> this means it took 1.25 times 10 to the 4 joules to heat 50 grams of water from 20.5 degrees to 80 degrees Celsius. In this example, we're going to do a bit more of a complex uh, scenario. So there's a couple things to keep in mind here. The weight that they give us is in kilograms which means we're going to have to change it to grams. And we're not dealing with water in this equation. We're dealing with solid ice, which has a different specific heat capacity, in this case, 2. But the overall concept is still the same. So we have our equation, Q equals mc delta T. Our mass, 100 kilograms. We need to change into grams. There's 1,000 grams in 1 kilogram. So we add three zeros. So 100,000 grams times our specific heat capacity, 2, 2 joules per gram degree Celsius, times the final temperature, minus 20, minus the initial temperature, minus 30. All these negatives might be a little confusing, but once you plug them into the equation, it makes more sense. So, minus 20 degrees Celsius, minus minus 30 degrees Celsius, two negatives is a positive. Negative 20, plus 30 is positive 10. So what we end up with is 100,000 times two, so 200,000 times 10, add another zero, becomes two million joules. Turn that into sig digs. We have two times 10 to the six joules is the increase in energy when 100 kilos of ice warms from minus 30 to minus 20. If we revisit our first example, we can go through it in a bit of a different way to calculate the enthalpy, or the energy change within the system. So for example, in our first question, we had 50 grams of water at 20.5 degrees Celsius being hated to 80 degrees Celsius. 
So instead of determining Q this time, we have to determine delta H. We go back to our formulas, Q equals MC delta T. So using all this info, we can determine Q. And then from Q, we can determine delta H, seeing as delta H is just negative Q. It's the energy change within the system. So we go back through this question. Q equals MC delta T. Mass of water is 50 grams. C is 4.19 joules per gram degree Celsius. Final temperature, 80 degrees Celsius, minus the initial temperature, 20.5 degrees Celsius. And we got 12.5 times 10 to the 4 joules. That's Q. Now, if delta H equals negative Q, we simply stick a negative sign over top of that, and we get delta H is negative 12.5 times 10 to the 4 joules, which means the change in energy is 12.5 times 10 to the 4, or that is to say the energy system lost 12.5 times 10 to the 4 joules. So for example, if this 50 grams of water is in a cup being heated by a candle, you could say the candle had given the cup of water 12.5 times 10 to the 4 joules. And that's the whole idea with enthalpy.